everyone. Okay, I'm just making sure my screen is all set up and I have do not disturb on. Um, thanks for joining me, everyone. And it's so fun to see where you're all from, people from looks like all over the world and mostly, mostly in the United States, but I see Germany and Mexico and New Hampshire, every, everywhere. Our, let's see. Oh, Philadelphia, that's where I'm from. Hello, Philly. Anyway, I'm here in, now my eyes are tearing from the screen. Okay. Um, I'm in Brooklyn, New York, in my studio, and whoo, yeah, my eyes are totally tearing. <laughs> um, and today, I'm excited to share this project with you all today. I am going to be working on um, a collage, and it's something that I do often. And if you've been following me for a while or you know my work, you probably have seen some of that uh, show up in my feed and in my books. And in my new upcoming book, there's a section on experimental and uh, sort of abstract work and collage. And, um, and I know the other thing that people really love to do and that is a little bit less intimidating and scary is to just work with your natural handwriting to um, write something that's meaningful. And so I say lettering, but we are going to sort of just use our handwriting and it shouldn't feel scary. It should feel really um, freeing and fun. And um, there's so many ways of making just your natural handwriting look really beautiful. And um, without, without having this whole, whole idea of perfection. So nothing we're gonna be doing today needs to be perfect. It's gonna be really playful and adventurous. And um, the other thing I wanna point out is that when you're doing abstract work and playing with collage, it's still important to think about composition and color and proportions and space. And, you know, just to, cause we're gonna be creating just a, a finished piece of art. So, there's all sorts of, you know, sort of art language and, and um, techniques that sort of still come into play that you, you do have to think about, but the pressure of perfection and drawing something as it is, you know, worrying about perspective and shading and all of those things that are, you know, can be really scary and intimidating and just, you know, just more work, more of a challenge. Um, is, you know, your list is free from that. So um, I'm gonna just now switch over to my desk because I have a lot to show you. And thanks again for joining me. You'll see my face again at the end. I think I'll still, you'll just sort of see the side of me. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I'm gonna share a few things just from my old sketchbooks, just to show, and this, this is, this is an example that I think, this page is in my book, Draw Your Day. Um, I think it leads the collage section. And it's, this, this paper was actually part of my day. So if you know my book, Draw Your Day, everything that I write and draw is actually pulled from any given day that I'm, that I'm creating. So I had bought, I think one of my boys, a shirt at a store, and this was the, the, the um, tissue paper in the bag was this map of New York. So I just tore it and blended it into the page, and then I created this date to sort of match and blend in, which is what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be playing with torn papers. I hope you brought some. And, but we're going to sort of blend it into the page with our Paints, I have my Derwent ink tense paints. You um, can also use the ink tense pencils or any, any paints that you have. So that's one example. And then here's another. This is, it's, it's again, it's sort of hard to tell what is, is taped on here and what isn't. But these were these little stars that are sparkling were confetti from an event that I went to. So I, I kind of 
love just sticking everything down and playing with it. Here's another example. I think this was from a restaurant. This was from an exhibit that we saw on, War on Warhol at the Whitney, and the, uh, which is an art museum here in New York. And I had these metallic tapes that were something from something from the day. So those were some examples. Um, and I also wanted to share with you, and it's a good idea for you to, I think I, I shared this in my last class, if anybody was here. I keep a collage box. It's just this plastic box. And anytime I have an, find an extra piece of paper, this is a coffee cup, uh, just anything. These are paint swatches that I was playing around with. I save it all so that I can then go through this box and pull things out. Here's some stickers. I love this box. It's, it just makes me very happy. So there's a lot, a lot in here. Ephemera, little like vintage things that I find. So I pulled a few things out because I have a little bit of an idea of what I want to do today. And so, before we get started, I just wanted to talk to you also about the quote. So I had mentioned in the class description that you can really write anything you want. And you can even ignore the words altogether if you want and just play as I play with, with color and torn papers. But I am going to write something today. I think it's nice to have a focus and it's nice to, to mix this class with the, the sort of free, fun, playful lettering as well as collage. So here are some examples. We put, I, we put them in the very beginning of the chat and we could put them in again if anybody wants to use one of these. Again, feel free to use your own or you can use the one that I'm going to use. And I think I'm gonna be using this first one because I just, I just love it. So sing like the birds sing, not worrying about who hears or what they think. And that's from Rumi. So, and I had, I had done a little portrait of Rumi in my tiny portrait book with the same quote. So I'm gonna do it again today. And so I'm gonna get started. If anybody has any questions as I get started, I'll talk through this idea of uh, using your using your handwriting and just uh, talk through how I choose colors and how I choose a theme and how I sort of arrange the comp composition. Okay. Quick question, Samantha. Where do you get those tiny books? And what type of sketchbook are you using? Uh, today I'm just working on a piece of watercolor paper. This tiny book is from... Um, Peg and all, and they, they make beautiful books. And the paper is uh, drawing paper, but you, you can put a light wash of, of paint on it. I love, I love their books. So, and I think I finished it last year, but I, this took me probably about six months and I shared it on my Instagram, scroll on my Instagram, you can see all of them. So, um, yeah, peg and all, and I actually make my own sketchbooks now, and I also make little tiny books as well. So there's a few tutorials, well, not really tutorials, I shouldn't call them that, but I did a few Instagram lives where I kind of showed a little bit of my process of making these books, so you can go onto my Instagram TV and find those there. Okay. So I'm going to start to write, and I'm going to I'm going to do most of this in just caps, just basic, simple writing. Oh yeah, my Instagram is SDL Baker Design because for 20 years or so I was a graphic designer, so it still still says design. I can't get rid of that. Um, I still have a designer, but anyway, okay.
Is there a pencil softness you recommend? Oh, I, I prefer 2B or 3B. That's just my go-to. This is a 3B pencil. Um, but that is really a personal choice. Some people have a very heavy hand. And so it's maybe better to go with a little bit of a firmer pencil. I love pencils. It's one of my favorite things in the world, the favorite tools. If you were to give me anything, it would just be a pencil and a big eraser. Um, so, and, and I believe like really any pencil's fine. <laughs> I don't like very hard pencils though. I like softer. Anything that has a B in it is good in my mind. <laughs> But it's it's really personal. So there, I just sort of base, basic penciled it in. I'm, I just decided to do caps today. I also do a lot of lettering in my script. If anybody wants to see me do anything, maybe it, towards the end I can, I can do a little bit of script as well, but this should be you. This should be your style. This should be sort of coming from your own hand and um, you know, you should just feel, feel free to you know, make it your own, even if you have messy handwriting. I think that that's awesome, you know? So it doesn't have to be perfect. And I think I'm gonna actually paint the letters a little bit right away, but I wanted to show what I chose. This is a, just a, um, a bag from a bakery. I think we, I had a croissant or something. And I like that with the greens. So I chose some of these green papers just for nature. This one is double-sided. It has some greens. I kind of like that all together. So this is how I do it. And so if you have a collection or anything that you have in your, in even a magazine, some, some catalogs, you can just sort of tear stuff out and play around. Does anybody have any questions? Who said the quote can't see? So I'm always tearing. I like to tear. I'm going to be tearing some of these papers, sort of making little like mountains. You don't want to sort of, you don't want to cut off. Looks like we're getting a few questions. The first one, do you need to worry about the acidity of the paper? And then do you always start with the quote first? I always start with the quote first. I don't know, actually that's not true. Sometimes I'll start to glue paper down in my journals, I'll just sort of, this is another really good point. If you don't know what to do one day, if you're just not sure what you wanna draw and what you wanna create, just start tearing papers and putting down paint. It's so much fun. And then honestly, I feel like when you're playing that way, that's when your true style can come out. That's when like the magic happens, that's when that's when you can just sort of discover, you know, these are patterns I like to make. These are colors I like to use. This is a mark, just making marks, you know? Um, I don't know, I, I, I can't recommend this kind of creating sort of enough. I'm making some leaf-like shapes. And the acidity of the paper, I don't think so. I mean, I honestly have, don't really think about it. <laughs> I use hot press paper and 
I don't like paper that's too um, mushy and, and, and textured just because I, I like to use ink. So if you want your, your piece of art to last and be you know, archival, then it's important to get good paper. The other thing that I can tell you, do you see how this was, some papers are really thick and if you don't want that thickness, you can peel them apart. You peel the layers of the paper apart to make it, make it thinner. Glue sticks. I have a Muji glue stick that I like, and this is my favorite. I don't know if Michael sells it, but the, any glue stick is gonna work, any glue. Some people like to like have that liquid glue that you sort of paint down. I always use glue sticks. My friend Caroline at CW Pencil in, in New York, they have a, a great website. She just did a whole thing on glue. And she they know like the nuances and differences of all the different glues. I stick with what I know and I can throw in my bag. Everything for me is about throwing it in my bag. So, you know, if it's too high maintenance, I usually, I probably won't. I won't buy it. That's just me. Do you keep a dedicated collage book or just keep collages and sketches in the same book? It's all in the same book. Yeah. So another thing, and I'm gonna, I'll show you. It's always good to have your paper go over the edge. And then what you do, I don't put this aside. What you do is it can even be a big piece. You could even sort of go like this like that. And then when you glue it down, you turn it over and that's when you trim. So it might be nice also to add a bird in this piece since it's about birds singing. And decisions about what you want to add and what you might want to cut out can, you know, can be made spontaneously. I hope people are working and having fun right now with me. I wish I could see what everyone's doing. So that piece I just had come right over and I'm just gonna trim it. I didn't say in my materials list to have scissors. I noticed that after. So hopefully you can always tear, you can always fold things behind the page. You can always add or trim later on. Okay, I'm gonna add some paint now. And the beauty of the Inktense paints is I can, I can go right over what I sketched and, 
add the ink or even paint over it after because the, the Inktense paints dry completely flat. So it won't get muddy, it won't get Yeah, it, it just, it's so nice. They're so nice. I, if, if you know me and my work and over probably the past year, you know how much I like these paints, so. Could you also be using the Inktense pencils here when doing this? Oh yeah, and I'm, I'm gonna add, I'll add some details with the pencils in a bit. I'm still deciding how I'm gonna do my letters. I usually kind of, I'll outline in ink and then paint inside, but I, I kind of want this to be a little bit more free form and not, um, I, don't, I don't know, I, maybe, if anybody has suggestions, if they, if they want to see how the pencils might work, if I do the lettering and pencils, I'm happy to do that because I'm, I'm making up my mind as I go, which is the beauty of this process as well. And I wanted to share that with everyone that I didn't have a plan other than the quote and some of the colors. I really, I'm, I'm just making this up and, you know, it's, it's just, um, super freeing. You know what, I'm gonna probably do, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add some little leaves and nature in the pencils. And I can also show what happens when you activate them with water. It's the water brush. The water brush or the Derwent water brushes. I'm sort of seeing in the corner some questions. So I'm sorry if I'm, I'm not seeing all of them, but these water brushes are, are great. I don't like all water brushes, but when I try these, they, they're so good. And I mean that. I'm not just saying that because I'm <laughs> working with Derwin. I promise. They know how much I like, like, like these products, and that's why I'm working with them. Everyone see what I'm doing? I'm gonna fill some of these leaves in with, with the pencil and then I'll also add a little bit of water so you can see what happens. Oh, and that was still a little wet there. Look how nice that is. Can everybody see kind of what happened there? There's a little bit of wetness from the paint. Okay, so now actually I have three different size brushes. I'm gonna use this brush, which I don't know if the number's on it. It's not the thinnest, but Great for smaller details. They have a one size small. The brushes come one size smaller. And I think uh, Michael sells all, all of these things. Do you see how that just came to life when I added the water?
And you see, the only thing on the page that is this coral color right now is this one leaf shape. And there's a little bit of red in, in the lower corner here. And so I might introduce some co more color, but this is where I mean, you know, design and composition does come into play in, in this kind of work. Yet I feel so much less pressure if I were sitting here drawing, you know, a portrait in front of everyone. And thinking of that, and I might add a bird up here. I feel like it's important to add a bird since the quote is about birds singing. I'm going to use a very dark, dark blue for the lettering. I sharpened too sharp. And if you took my my first class on on Michaels, which is is you you it's on the archive and on the Michaels um, YouTube channel. But you can find the link on my on my website. We I did a, a a lettering class, and so right now I'm sort of adding a little bit of weight to the bottom of the letters, and this that is something that I did in that in that class. We did a whole bunch of different exercises using our handwriting. And what's so nice too about these pencils is you don't have to add water. They, they make such intense color just without even adding water. And I'm actually curious what happens to this color when I do add some water because it changes the color a bit. What pencil sharpener do you use um, to make the long points on the ink tents? Uh, I, I also share, I, I think Derwent makes a nice pencil sharpener, but I don't have it. I use a Muji pencil sharpener that I had shared on the first class as well. And I, I think, I think, but at the end of the class, um, it was like sold out on Amazon or something. It's, it's a great pencil sharpener and it's really not expensive. This is what it looks like. It's so good. And you just clamp it and hold, hold it. It's, it's, um, I, I think it's maybe $12 too, 
it's not very expensive. It's not a big, huge um, investment. Actually, I'm not sure how much it costs, but it's not expensive. Anything pencil sh pencils or pencil sharpening wise, if you go to CW Pencil website, that's they have they have everything. They don't sell the Muji um, pencil sharpener. trying to not rush through this, but I know I'm taking a little time with this lettering. And hopefully that gives you a little bit of time to play and work on your own. And I'm happy to answer more questions while I'm getting this done. One of the questions is, how often should we practice lettering to find our own style? How often should you practice lettering to find your own style? Correct. Every day. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I think practicing, practicing and sort of celebrating the little quirks that come out or even your scribble, you know, and, and, and making that part of your, your style and work. Some of it is just, it's about relaxing and, and realizing, you know, what, what is already sort of happening and coming out is okay. And, um, you know, I, there, there's one artist who I shared also in the first, class, James Victoria, some of you might know him. He, his, his writing is literally scribbled, but it's so great looking and he does it in ink and he like makes, makes his words really big. And that's a great example of just, you know, playing with what, what comes out. I would say every day is a good, idea to practice anything you want to get better at or, or, you know, figure out what, what your style is every day, practice every day. We have another question about if you, for this, I guess we, we wrote our letters, but what if you painted the watercolor first and then decided to add a quote, what would you use to, for the writing and the drawing over the watercolor? Oh, that's a good question. That's a very good question. You know, you could go right in with an acrylic or an acrylic wash or something um, more opaque and just, but you know, if you want to plan your space, like this is more words, it's not just one word. And I, I sort of wanted to make sure that it lined up pretty well. That there, there's usually, you can do a very, very light pencil over watercolor and then you can use ink on top of that or you know in my mind I love seeing those layers so if, even if all the pencil doesn't erase because it sort of binds down with the with the with the paint or something I, I don't I, I don't mind that so but these these line makers or um, micron pens or any, anything that's a, that's a permanent ink so that you can sort of go back over it with that with another oh, another wash or another water-based pigment um, just make sure that the, the ink is permanent so 
So I don't know if that's like a clear answer. There is really no rules to any of this. There's no right or wrong way to do anything in my mind, unless you're following like an exact craft and there's an exact technique, but this is really art making. So you make your own rules. Um, some things will, won't work, some things will. And some of the fun is in discovering that. And some of the magic happens out of discovering that. And sometimes you'll just mess it up and that sucks. But, you know, that's part of the process too. So I'm just going over this with, with the, I'm literally like just trace, you can see I'm moving very quickly, but it's kind of nice. It kind of makes the, I don't know if you can see, but it makes the, the uh, pencil just a little bit more um, like intense. Well, intense, there you go. <laughs> it makes it more intense. It's a perfect word. And some of the strokes kind of get a little bit lighter. I don't know if you can see that, but it's, it's, it's really nice. Do you have to seal this with anything? No, no, um, no. If you're using, um, if you introduce some pastels or, you know, some, some watercolor paints have like a granular nature to them that, that could sort of rub, rub off. But the ink tents, once you add the water to it, it kind of binds it. It's, it's pretty permanent. Um, I have never, other than work with, with the, um, I, I've recently done some figure drawing with Conte crayons, which are a little bit of like a, a more solid chalk pastel. And they need to be, they need to have a um, sealant or like a, a, a spray, what am I forgetting the word, binder, but um, this, this stuff doesn't. Okay, now I'm going to, One of our comments is if you could talk a little bit more about figuring out spacing mm -hmm. and if you measure or how you how you work through that. I would say that anything with composition, and this is going to be my next class with Derwin, is fitting things together. So you can join join us then. I, I think it's June 9th, is that right? Um, Grace confirm, or I think it's June 9th. Do you know? Anyway. Yes, I will double check. <laughs> yeah, I think it's June 9th. I think I got that right. And, you know, and what I'm going to say then is true. It all is practice. And it's having that foresight of what, you know, how, how big a word is and how much space it's going to take up or how much, you know, or if you're deciding to draw a, you know, um, let's, let's just say, uh, a banana in a place where you only have, you know, a little bit of a vertical space, you know, then the banana has to go in a certain way. And like, we're going to talk about all that and sort of how things kind of fit together and how you can sort of see and plan. And, and I'm just a firm, firm believer in pencil when you're doing anything where you have to plan a space out. Because, you know, if you're just going to draw something, and plop it in the middle or put it off to the side, you know, you don't have to sketch as much. You can maybe just go for it if you're really, really um, practiced and you're like, want to just go for it. But I feel like if you're ever going to fit a whole bunch of things together onto a page, it's nice to have a little bit of a plan, even if it's loose. And then you can fill those little tiny spaces with, with flowers. You can fill the little spaces with, I do like little, little pieces of fruit or nuts or 
you know, polka dots or stripes or something that, you know, just takes up that, that space. Um, as far as how I planned this, I knew that I wanted it a little bit off to the side. And I think that, you know, the only, the only thing I can tell you is that for me, it's just, it's, I've been doing it for so long. So I kind of know what's going to happen, but there are many times where I miss plan and, you know, I have to shift things around a little bit or, and, and that's why I always have an eraser. So, all right, I'm just going to paint the bird, I'll paint the bird very lightly. So I, I'm, I'm sorry if there's no like clear, clear answer, but with anything, composition, design, um, fitting things onto a page, the more you do it, the more you will have that foresight, the more you'll be able to recognize what, what's gonna fit and what and what's not. Do you want to talk a little bit more about the paint pen water brushes? We're having questions about how they work. Um, and there are four sizes in total. Mm -hmm. But I think yes. right now you're probably using the medium, maybe? I think I'm using or a large. The three larger sizes. Let me just see if I have. Yeah. Look at what I have. <laughs> ah. <laughs> you guys should hire me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Okay, that was a bad joke. So there you go. It's the two millimeter is the tiniest. I I don't have that one with me right now. I, I don't I don't use that one that much. I find that the medium tip and the large tip are really um, good because they have a pretty good point and you can get some fine detail with that. And then the large one I use a lot to cover a large space. That's this one as a flat edge. Hopefully that, that helps. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. And then as far as ink tents, after it's dried, can you reactivate it with water? No. N no, not, not really. I mean, okay, so let's see. I'm gonna just add some water to these leaves. Let's just do an experiment. not there's a little bit coming off there's a little bit but this is also the pencils so some of that pigment might might have not been fully activated the paints here though this area i mean i i can go right right over that that's only the water that's at it's completely dry it's not that's just water sitting on top of that. If that, if that, if you can see that, does that make sense? It's not moving. I always have a paper towel for blotting. Or a t-shirt works if you would rather. Okay, so some of this color I'm gonna continue. How, how much time do we have? About 10 minutes? I just want to show how I sort of, you know, this idea of collage, uh, of sorry, of sort of camouflaging the the patterns that I see in the papers. I'm going to just echo some of these stripes that are in this one. And then some of this marble.
We have a question about using glossy magazine pages um, and mm -hmm. if you ever work with those or if it's more difficult with the water and the ink smudging. Yeah, the, the magazine, the, the magazine um, paper can be fussy, but so can all papers. I mean, sometimes you add water and it'll just, you know, it depends on how it's printed or um, there's, it's, it's really, it's really just a matter of sort of experimenting and seeing what, what works in any given, for any given project and with, with your materials. Um, you don't have like a definite answer about, because some magazines are on uncoated paper. Um, those sort of, yeah, like catalog, the, the magazine paper that I think that we're all sort of thinking of. It, it, it can be, I don't use it that much, but there's some, there's some magazines that I've gotten that now like trade magazines, um, design magazines, they're on this, I'm, I'm kind of making like a little bit of a, a mess here, by the way, which is kind of fun. I'm just going, I'm just experimenting. So I don't even know what it's <laughs> gonna look like in the end. But this is where this is where I, I really think that those beautiful things happen. I'm, gonna, I'm adding like it's like it's like little roots or something are coming out of the ground. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. It's kind of interesting though, right? <laughs> okay. Let's see. That's a darker. How do you when it, know when it's done? I just looked up and saw that question and it's a good question. I don't think this is done yet. It's a little random what I'm doing here. So I'm probably gonna keep going. I, I might have to keep going after we get off because I'm kind of liking it, but I'm not sure. It is a gut feeling, I think. There is no, you can definitely overwork things though. Um, and you know, it's only it's only up to you when your piece is finished. Um, a little flower here. I would love to see if anybody has a piece that they're proud of or that they, they want me to see if you want to send me a direct message on Instagram or um, post it as um, Lindsay said um, on, on and tag because uh, Michaels would like to see as well. Getting somewhere, this is going to be like sort of like a rooted kind of interesting garden here down here, down at the bottom but I know we're running out of time, so I probably should. We have a question from Diane about what do you do with all of your practice projects? Mm. Well, usually, usually my work goes into my sketchbooks. <laughs> so I save them all and I have like a very big stack of them. And but that prevents me from selling the work or using it some other way. And um, 
that's a good question for me personally because I I don't know what I'll do with this. You know, I mean, if I like it in the end, I I could you know I don't know I I could sell it to somebody if they wanted it. I wouldn't charge that much. <laughs> I don't know. For me, it, that's a good that's a very good question and. My work is, you know, in my books and I collect it and I give it, I give it to some people sometimes as gifts and I do sell some work. Do you ever use oil pastels? I love oil pastels. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of figure drawing lately with a, um, a model just to sort of practice that. This is, again, it's personal. This is just sort of what I'm doing, but, um, and that, so I'm going back to all these materials from, from the past, like from art school, from, from when I, you know, Conte crayons are, I remember they were on my materials list, my freshman year of, of college at, at school. And I don't think I've used them since. So, and the, and the same with oil pastels, and I love them. And they would be great to play with in a project like this with your collage. They would be awesome. All right, so I don't, if, if I, I should probably come up to the center, you know, come up, my, uh, switch the camera view so I can talk to people. And um, this is, this is how it's looking. Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay. So that, you know, that was, that was fun for me. And I'm just going to keep working on a little bit. And I hope that everybody has their own projects that they're working on. Um, this is hopefully something that you can just incorporate into your, daily art making practice or weekly or just experiment with it once a month and you know just have fun this the whole idea is just to be carefree and have fun there's so many classes that we take that are intimidating and scary and give us made it make us feel at the end oh my gosh I can't do that and I don't want you to ever feel that way with my classes because everybody can do this stuff so that that's my goal for everyone to realize that they can do it and have fun and create something beautiful. Um, that's it. I mean, if anybody has any last questions, is there, is there anything else? I'm seeing thank yous. You're welcome. <laughs> Grace, is there anything else? Should we, should we just say goodbye? I or, think I, we still have a few minutes. So if, if anybody wants to, to, um, to ask do me you, anything. Do you want to take a moment and talk about your new book coming out or where they can find you on social media? Oh yeah, I'm not a very good salesperson that way. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a, a new book coming out. I can go get the, my, my first book and the new one. So some of you might have Draw Your Day. And the new book is a little bigger, which is kind of fun. Draw your world. And I'm so excited for everyone to get this. It comes out, I think we're about like six weeks away. So it's still a while and I'm sorry that it's not sooner. Um, I, we, it was supposed to come out June 1st. So in my mind, that's still when it's coming out, but it's June 22nd. And that just was because of COVID and you know publishing and whatever. So. It's June 22nd and um, you can pre-order and I have amazing uh, giveaway for, you know, as an incentive for people to pre-order because for authors, it's so important to get those pre-orders in. And um, so the prizes are one person will win a workshop with me for up to 10 people and everybody gets um, like a downloadable sort of supplement little chapter and a print that they can download. And then the other prizes, there's three packages of amazing supplies. And Derwent is, has provided a bunch of stuff. 
and some other brands that I work with. And I'm also working on a paint palette collaboration. So there's a lot of fun stuff. So if you join my mailing list, my website is sdonbaker.com. You'll be the first to know about all these things. And that's also where you'll find the pre-order under books in the menu. You just click on books and there you'll find the pre-order. So um, yeah, and in the back I will share, there's a section on experimental and multimedia, which is all about what we did today. So I really believe in it and I just, uh, I want y'all to have fun creating this kind of work, so. Thank you for asking me to do that, Grace. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> and as we kind of said at the beginning, it would be awesome if you all could tag her, tag Michael's, and also the Derwent Art underscore US account. We would love to see everything that you create. Um, and once again, thank you so much, Samantha. Yeah, thank you, everyone. It was so, it was nice. It was, it's nice to be able to share this kind of work with you. So I hope you enjoyed it.